what's going on, y'all? T-Bob here. And Jake as well. And you're about to watch a little OTB LSU. We're going to give you all the latest, greatest between LSU football, baseball, women's basketball, softball, and everything in between. Bottom line, if you want to talk Tigers, keep it locked, subscribe, like it, and uh, we hope you enjoy the- Uh Jake, let's talk offensively because, to me, this is, this is one of the things that I hate is that the offense is under so much unreal pressure that we end up having to highlight these tiny mistakes that feel massive because there's no margin of error. It's things like um, the early Chris Hilton drop, you know, the bomb in the beginning of the game where Jaden throws yeah. a dime. And it's a very tough catch, but he does hit him in stride. I mean, he leads him. Defender never has a chance, and Hilton's the only one, and it ends up falling through his hands. Uh, John Emery had a bad uh, – this is either a drop or a bad run read on, like, a first down that later became, like, a – third and eight that resulted in the fumble. Um, it was the Caleb Jackson drop, and I think it was maybe the fourth quarter, third. Oof. There was Kyron Lay. So, so at the very end of the half, down by three, when you get the ball back and you're trying to eat Kyron Lacey, had that like 30-yard drop that would have set you up for a much easier field goal. And again, I'm not highlighting these to crap on these guys because these should be relatively small mistakes, especially things like the Caleb Jackson and the Emory moments. Even though after this, I only want Diggs and Williams to play. Um, but but the problem is there's just – I mean, you, you understand the problem. Because the margin of error is so small, these things take on greater importance. And it just sucks because this offense should yeah. be celebrated because they're awesome. Yeah, I mean, so many things that we – like within the game, like T-Bob's laying out, that could have changed the narrative of the game. But like something – very small, like missing a kick like that before half. And you were, I mean, you yeah. were right there in the middle. You just didn't have the distance. And you could see Brian Kelly yelling at a special teams coach because right before then, he asked him, where do we need to get to? Yeah. To feel comfortable. Like you saw the broadcast show, where do we need to get to? And you answer the question and you throw underneath. You get to that spot and then five yards short, maybe? Yeah, you were a holder. Uh, the ball it had to get spun. Does that take anything off the kick? Um, I think it does. I kind of had that feeling too. Like when I saw the ball spin, I was like, I yeah. don't know. I mean, dude. it was a full spin too. Yeah, um, it was no, it was a full laces. And I mean, credit to the holder. It's a good spin. I'm not saying that the snap that's on the snapper. You get at this level, you're supposed to be able to snap it where you're hitting an exact amount of rotations yeah. every time. So uh yeah, I played with Dave Ben in the NFL and he was like an eighteen year vet. Dave DePen man uh, Anderson, by the way, so shout out to Dave Ben. Uh he would snap it perfect every time where the laces would hit your right hand, like perfectly right hand down, right hand yeah. down. So it does take a little bit off of it. But then you saw Brian Kelly after that, like get after a special teams coach. He's like, you basically like you told me this is where we had to get to. And you're like, okay, well, does that matter? Well, you make that the last drive, you're kicking a field goal to tie the game. So like it's, it's yeah. little, I mean, or a even, thousand even, things happened in even between the fumble. there. On the fumble, you're in field goal range. Yeah. If you get sacked there, Damian Ramos will make that field goal. Yeah. And then again, yeah, you're kicking a field goal at the end. Um, so that's again, but when you have a historically bad defense, you leave yourself no room for any of this. And again, I just, I, I really can't spend enough time hyping Jaden Daniels and his growth, the tight windows, third and goal back of the end zone in the red zone, where it's hard to do that. Not even with a full field stretched out in front, confident, immediately making the read. You need three, third, three, no, no, no. I immediately made my read. Uh, I saw like, the 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 wide receiver's hips flip in a or excuse me the DB's hips flip okay I know where I'm going with the ball anticipatory yeah. throws over the middle things that I never thought he'd be able to do where you know receivers are breaking behind linebackers and he's throwing to a spot and it just looks beautiful from the end zone copy the second 17 50 yard run I mean everything that he does with the legs the decisions on when to run it when to throw it. And again, not just the throws he's making, but the throws he's making when the pressure is on. It's 28-14. you got to score. Third and three, that's the corner throw to Brian Thomas. The Kyron Lacey throw to make it 28-31 with over a minute left in that first half and really called you to be like, okay, we survived this initial onslaught. Um, the free play at the end of the game to go up nine where the defensive lineman jumps off sides, recognizes it, throws a bomb, drops it again in the bucket, touchdown. Scrambled on the final play, put it on Chris Hilton's hands. Could have been a legend. 
not in the end. And you know what else we never give him credit for? And shout out my guy Bojack. So I was hanging out with Don Juan on Twitter. He pointed out exactly right. That's a tough son of a gun. And we don't ever talk about that. We get mad at him for running. Nobody ever got mad at Burrow for not sliding, for lowering his head. Jaden Daniels is tough, tough as hell, too. There's one thing Jaden Daniels doesn't do. He doesn't go half-stepping. He's always trying to get them chains. He's always trying to get extra yards. He stands in the pocket and takes hits. Dude's been unbelievable. And you're wasting the second greatest quarterback season LSU's ever had. Yeah, I mean, the, the last play to buy time, to wait it out, to see that you had an opportunity. Now, you got to throw that ball at the exact right height to yeah. give your receiver a <laughs> he chance. He literally did it. <laughs> and he put it on the money. And is it a is it an easy catch? Absolutely no. not. Um, you know, does Brian Thomas come down with that catch? Like we can have that conversation, but whatever. We're talking Jaden here. Like he put it in the in the right spot to give your chance uh your team a chance to win there, man. It's just uh time and time again. I mean, I can't a handful of plays maybe if you want to be critical, but that <laughs> That loss right there, it's like you're in that game because of him. Yeah. Oh, no, without a doubt. No, I mean, not yet. Yes. Yes. And, you know, receivers, they're all awesome. And they're so much fun to watch. They should be more fun to watch. But instead, it's just, you know, you're just pounding, you're just weeping and gnashing your teeth and tearing your shirt. I mean, Will Campbell's a stone wall. Now, the false starts at the end of the game were, were frustrating, right? Um, because, you know, you can't afford that there. But Will Campbell was unstoppable. Uh, this offensive line was dominant. Mason Taylor played really well, blocking and receiving. Uh, the, Logan Diggs, yeah, Logan like you Diggs. said, was Oof. a beast, running hard, decisive. Everything that we thought was going to happen, happened offensively. But And it's funny because everybody at the bar was just exasperated. Just, just give us one play, defense. Just one play. Somebody, one person make one play, and zero people came up with zero. And you end up with the L. You went up nine. I mean, that's the worst part of rewatching this film, Jake, uh, is reliving the sequence in the game flow where you finally come up with a stop. You actually had two stops in a row. Uh, you kind of come up with a big fourth down stop. Then you get a holding penalty, immediately start your drive when you're up two. You overcome it. You come up with a beautiful touchdown where Jada takes advantage of the free play. And you're up nine with eight and a half minutes left. Do you know how soft you have to be? to lose a nine-point lead with eight and a half minutes left and lose it to the point where your offense still has a minute left to play with? That's the softest thing I've ever six. heard. That's soft. Yes, yes. Not yeah. a field goal. That is, I mean, it's a come-to-Jesus moment in that building today. Wow, Jake, what incredible takes. I mean, those guys, they're just the best. Uh, I think so. And if you think so, again, hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications we post every single day here on OTB LSU.